In this video we're going to have a look at creating a swipe gallery app for Android mobile devices. We'll be using Adobe Flash to make it today. So basically what we've got here is a clothing brand called Arnhem and they cater for ladies of clothing. What's going to happen in our app is the user is going to be greeted by this home page. And from here they need to press the enter button which will take them into scene number two and give them some clothing options to look at. I'll just go to show all for a moment. These are the five pictures we've got and it's basically a swipe gallery so people are going to be able to swipe their finger across the page backwards and forwards to scroll through these pictures. If I press control enter we can have a look at how it works exactly. Okay my resolution is a bit out so yes my app's a bit too big here. But basically the user will press on enter with their finger and up comes the clothing. If I just go over to my simulator here and turn on the touch layer and the swipe feature, I'm able to swipe through these pictures with my mouse. Okay, so backwards and forwards, you can swipe through the pictures. Fairly simple app, a lot more could be added to it, but I just want to show you the basic feature of the swipe gallery for now. Um, and it's fairly simple to create because Flash does most of the work for us. Okay, they've got a template that's already made up and we can use that to make this app. So I'll close off my example now and from this splash screen I want you to choose templates. Under templates choose the F Android option and go down to swipe gallery and click on OK. If you just go to your magnification box and choose fit in window you can see we've got some pictures here. These are just image placeholders and they'll be replaced with the pictures we want to include in our swipe gallery. Um, so what we're going to do to begin with is go up to our window menu and choose the scene option. Now we want to add in a home scene so I'm going to click on this piece of paper in the corner to add another scene in. It's called scene 2 at the moment. I'm going to rename that by double clicking on it and I'm going to call it home. I'm going to drag the home scene above scene 1. Scene 1 can also be renamed. We'll just call it clothing because that's going to be the scene where we can swipe through all the different pieces of clothing. We'll start with the home scene today though, because it's a fairly simple one to set up. So at the moment my stage is black. Make sure you've chosen, chosen white. We want this to be a fairly simple looking app, so I'm going to choose a plain white background. On top of there we want to get the picture of the Arnhem logo. So what I'm going to do is import that picture to the, uh, to the library. So I'm going to go to File and Import, and then Import to Library. Now from the folder, we've got a few different pictures we want to bring into our library. Not just the logo, but also the pictures of the clothing. So once you've selected all those items, click on Open. And if you go to your library panel, you'll see you've got all these pictures in your library, including the logo we want to use first of all today. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, let's go to our timeline and give it the name. We'll call it background. Okay, it's basically going to be the text and the pictures that go in the background. So from my library I'm going to pick up this Arnhem logo, drop it onto my page and use the free transform tool to resize it. I'll just hold shift and click and drag. Okay, if you would like to center that picture in the uh, middle of the app what you need to do is just click on that, go to your window menu and get your align box up. In your align panel simply check the box that says align to stage and click on align horizontal center and that will put that text or that logo in the center of your page. Below that we're going to grab the text tool and we're going to write some text. The color I want your text is that color there. It's the same as the Arnhem logo color. Okay, So it's hashtag 3C2211 and what I want you to write is ladies clothing range. Now if you've got it installed I'd like you to use Roboto font, very simple font to read on mobile devices, in particular Android. And the style I've gone with is thin. Okay, I'm just going to have to find it. That's a pretty good size actually. I'm not going to change that size. I will align it in the center. Okay, That's looking pretty good. Might be a little bit big so if you're fussy like me you might want to drop that down a little bit in size. Maybe put a little bit of letter spacing in. That's a bit too much letter spacing. Okay, 
Okay, so you just nudge that around, and if you want to try and align it in the center again, yep, that's looking good. The next thing we want to put on this home page, back to our library, is the home picture. Just a picture of one of the items of clothing you can find at this um, Arnhem company. So it's a bit big, I'll use the free transform tool again. Holding shift, I'll resize it. You want to leave a little bit of room at the bottom for a button in a moment, so about that size looks good. I'll align it in the center again. Okay, that's looking good. You can put some effects on that picture if you'd like, like a drop shadow or a stroke around the outside if you get time. I'm not going to worry about showing you that in this video. You've seen it before. And basically to draw the button down the bottom, I'm going to use my rectangle tool. Now you want that brown color we just had before as your stroke and your fill color to be white. And we're simply going to draw on a rectangle down the bottom of the page. From there, I'm just going to use my black arrow to highlight that button. I'm going to go up to Modify, and I'm going to convert it to a symbol. And the name of the button will be called Enter. Make sure the type is Button, and you can click on OK. Now, we do want to put code on this button a bit later on, so straight away, go up to your Properties, and while it's selected, give it the name Enter. Okay, now this button's not complete yet, so I'm just going to first of all align it in the center of the page. And then I'm going to double click on the button, and as I double click on it, you'll notice the timeline down the bottom is going to change. Okay, we're in isolation mode now, so what I'm going to do is just zoom in a bit on this button by pressing Ctrl Plus. I'm going to add some text into it. Now, the text I want you to add in is simply the word Enter. I'll just click in the middle there. I'm going to choose Roboto font again. I might make it a bit thicker this time, instead of thin. Oh, I'll just try the light and see how that's going to look. Oops. It's not too bad. Um, I will align that in the center. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, so if I zoom out now, let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. What I will do though, is add an effect on this button. So that when we push down on the button, it changes color. Okay, so when our users push down with their finger on the enter button, we might get it to reverse its colors. So I'll zoom back in down there. Now you can see in the timeline, we've got up, over, down, and hit states. We're gonna go to the down state and press F6. And what we're gonna do there, since we put a keyframe is, our uh, keyframe in, we're going to reverse the colors. So I'm going to click on the background to begin with. And I'll just have to change its color to that brown. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now I've got the text selected here. I'm going to change its color to just white. And that's basically the reverse colors of what we had before. So when we're in the up state of the button, which means it's just sitting there on the page doing nothing, it's going to look like this. When we press down on it with our finger, it will look like that. Pretty straightforward. So that's basically the design for our um, home page done. So I'm going to lock that layer into place and make a new layer called Actions. And in there we're going to start putting some action script in to make this page work. So press F9 to bring your Actions box up. Now the first action that we need to put in is a fairly straightforward one. It's just the word stop. Open and close the brackets in a semicolon. When we um, load up this app, we basically want it to stop straight away. We don't want it to go into scene number two. We just want it to sit like this. So that's fairly simple. The next piece of code we want is down on this enter button. When we click on the enter button, we want to go into scene number two. Okay, so we'll click on the enter button just to select it. Oops, I've just got it locked. I'll unlock it. Once it's selected, we're going to go to the window menu and get our code snippets up. I'll just close these for a sec. What you need to do is go to Action Script, Timeline Navigation, and go down to Click to Next Scene and Play. Now if you double click that, Flash will automatically paste in some code into your actions. Okay, that must have worked. I'll just double click that again. There we go. Okay, so you can see it's put in the code to basically take us to the next scene. You don't even have to touch a thing, you don't even have to understand it. Flash has done the job for you. 
Okay, so I'm going to close that box off now. That's our home page all done. Might be a good idea at this point to save your work. Um, after that, we're going to go into scene number two, which is the clothing scene here, and we're going to replace these placeholder pictures with our clothing pictures. So there's a fair bit we have to do here. The first thing, let's delete this instructions layer. So, let's the trash can on that. We've also got this weird menu that old Samsung phones used to display, but they don't do that anymore, so I'm going to go to this menu layer here and delete that as well. In our action script, there is some code that made that little options menu work. So just press F9, and at the bottom of your code, you can see we've got this options menu code that we need to delete. So I'm going to highlight it all. I'm going to leave the word stop there, but I'm going to delete everything below that options menu code. Okay, and Then we're just left with the code to make our swipe gallery work. Okay. So the first thing I might do is scrap the background. Okay, So if I hide the background, you can see what it looks like without it. So I'm just going to click on the background layer there and delete it. Okay, we want that white background in for our app. The next thing I'm going to do is go up to my view menu and select rulers. And I'm going to drag a ruler down so it hits the top of our gallery items there. And I'm going to bring in one from the left so it meets up with each of our other image placeholders. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect, we're going to zoom in in a moment and make sure it is perfect. I'm just going to go. Press Control plus a few times, get in close up the top here, and make sure these are all looking good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go to the next one. Good. And here's our last picture, so I'll just if I can drag that over. Alright, so we should be ready now to replace these image placeholders with one of our fashion pictures. Okay, so to replace these image placeholders, we need to click on them first and then double click. Okay, and that opens us up in isolation mode where we can edit these um, images one by one. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is work on this first one. I'm going to simply pick it up and I'm going to delete it. I'll delete that number one that's there as well. What I'm going to do is go to my library, pick up dress number one, and drag it and drop it onto the page. Okay, let's get it into that position with the rulers there. You can see it does overflow onto the um, canvas. So what I'm going to do is go to my properties. While I've got this picture selected, I'm going to change the width to 425. And the height, I'll try about 700. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So that's the size we need for each of our pictures. 425 width and 700 height. So I'm just going to simply delete the next one. I'll go to the library, get dress 2 up, drag and drop it onto the page. Okay, and I'll snap it into place first of all, then go to properties, get it 425 and 700 for the height. Same for number three here. Go to library, bring out dress three. Get it into position first of all. 425 by 700. Number four. Can't believe we've got a skirt we want to bring in. Size will be 425 by 700. Now this is where we run out of room. Okay, There's only four image placeholders in Flash, but we can add more pictures in if we want to. So what I'm going to do is go to my library, and from my library I'm going to pick up the last picture, which is the overalls, and drag and drop it onto my page. Let's just change its properties to 425 width and 700 height, like all the other ones. And basically, we need to get it in position over here on the right, so there's an even amount of space between each picture. Okay, so what I'm going to do is probably different ways to do this, but my way of doing it, I'm going to click, 
drag this over and just snap it onto this picture here. And I'm going to press the right arrow key a number of times and work out how long it takes until it snaps onto this blue line. So I might even hold shift and press the right arrow key once, twice. I'm going to take off shift now and go one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do two big jumps and five little jumps for an even space. So what I'll do is just snap this onto the edge of this picture now. Hold shift and press the right arrow twice. One, two. Take my hand off shift and do five little jumps. One, two, three, four, five. And now we've got an even amount of space between each picture. Okay, so I think that looks fairly good. If I just go up to the magnification and show all, we've now got our five pictures in on that scene. I might even rename that layer to... Actually, no, I'll leave that as it is. I don't need to rename the layer. I'm just going to go back now. Okay, so that's gallery items layer. It's all set up and ready to go as far as I can see. What I might do is also put in another layer. I'm just going to put it down the bottom. I'll call it text. I'm going to put a little bit of text just over here that says summer collection or summer 2015 collection. Okay, so I'll come over. I've got Roboto. I'm going to choose the thin Roboto font. And I'm just going to write in 2015 summer collection. Now again we have the issue of it being too big so I might just change the letter spacing to 2 change the size down about 30, we'll see how we're looking looking good I'll align that in the centre of the stage ok that looks pretty good um, one of the last things we have to do now is go to our action script on this scene and just edit it so that we can cater for this fifth image that we added into our app so I'm going to go over to my code in my code the first thing I want to do actually go up the top and write in the stop code so in line one write the word stop open and close a bracket and do a semicolon that will just stop our app when the user comes to this scene you can see here the variable total gallery items number equals four we're just going to change that to five and everything else should be all good flush has written the code for us we don't need to touch any more as far as I can see. So we'll just close off our action script. And from here we're probably ready to test our app out. So we can try pressing Control Enter. We'll just give it a test run and see if this is going to work. I think my screen resolution will make life a bit difficult for us though. So uh, let's have a look. Oh no, we're alright. So this is our home screen. We press enter as I hold down the button you can see that rollover effect in action there so as I hold down on the button it changes color when I press it it goes to the next scene okay, if I just um, open up the touch layer and turn swipe on we can give it a go and see if our swipe gallery is going to work okay yep yeah, that's looking good so it's time to test it on the phone now, so I'm going to go to File and Save As and just make sure I've got that saved. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. And then I'm going to go over to Publish Settings on the right hand side. I'm just going to make sure Flash is checked, nothing else. A good name there called Item Clothing. And I'm going to go up to the F Android Settings button. You should have Item Clothing written in these three boxes. Um, it's Portrait format and we're in full screen mode. We'll go to the deployment tab, make sure you've got your password typed in for your digital certificate. I'll embed the air runtime with the application and click on OK. I'll click OK again. I'm happy with all that so I'll save it and then I will publish it. And what that's going to do now is just publish an APK file which is a file we can use on Android phones so hopefully that doesn't take too long.
Okay, it says the message telling us that our app has been packaged successfully, so I'll click OK. I'm going to go to my desktop, and here's a few of these Arnhem Clothing files that have been saved. The one we're looking for, though, is the ArnhemClothing.apk file. Once you've found it, just copy it. Go into your folders and look for your mobile device that's plugged in. So I'm going to open up my Samsung Galaxy S5 and go to Documents right click and paste in that app. So there it is there. That should be on my phone so what I'm going to do is turn my camera on and you can have a look at my phone and we'll see if we can install this app and get it working. Okay so here's my phone I'll just unlock it and go to um, it should be on this side up the top I've got my files so I'll click on that Inside my files, I'm going to go to device storage. In there, I've got documents. And you see at the top, I've got the Arnhem Clothing app that we made. So I'll click on that. It's just going to ask me if I want to install it, and I do. So I'll click on install. Just down the bottom here. And that's just going to take a few seconds to install onto my phone. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so it's installed. I can click on open at the bottom now. And there's my Arnhem app. As I press this button of enter, just watch it change colour. I'll hold it down so you can see that. That's the um, down state. So as I press down, it changes colour and goes into the next scene. You can see the writing down the bottom there. 2015 Summer Collection. There are no instructions, so you've just got to assume that you can swipe it around. That's working fine. So when you get to that last one, you can't go any further. So you just have to swipe back. And if you'd add more to this app, you would have like a home button and things like that as well at the top. But that's basically it. I just wanted to show you how to get the Swipe Gallery app working. Okay, so I'll just close the camera off now. And that's all we've got for this tutorial. So just go to File and Save, and you are done.